Hey there! Ever wondered what would happen if you drove a Formula One car on your local city street? Spoiler alert! It wouldn't last long. F1 cars are the fastest, most finely tuned machines on four wheels. They're built to handle extreme speeds, perfect corners, and world-class tracks. But put one on a bumpy road with just a few cracks or dips, and it's a disaster waiting to happen. So the question is, why Formula One cars can't survive potholes? Let's break down why that is, right here, on History of Simple Things. Formula One cars are designed for smooth, predictable, and controlled environments. That means perfectly paved tracks, no surprises, no bumps, and definitely no potholes. The entire car is engineered with the assumption that the surface beneath it will be smooth, like a billiard table. Take the suspension system, for example. Unlike your average road car, an F1 suspension is incredibly stiff. It's built to minimize body movement and maximize tire contact with the ground at all times. The trade-off? Comfort and shock absorption are practically non-existent. Even the tires on an F1 car aren't designed for imperfections. They're wide, smooth, and made of a super soft compound that delivers extreme grip, but only under ideal conditions. Throw a pothole into the mix and suddenly you've got chaos, misalignment, broken parts, or worse, an instant retirement. Here's a number to think about, 30 to 35 millimeters. That's how low the typical F1 car rides above the ground. That's barely enough space to slide a smartphone underneath. Now picture what happens when one of those cars encounters a dip in the road, or worse, a pothole the size of a dinner plate. It's game over. A pothole that your daily commuter could easily absorb with a little bump could rip the floor right off an F1 car. That's because the floor of the car isn't just decorative. It's a crucial aerodynamic component. Any damage there, and the whole balance of the car is thrown off. Even a minor scrape from a road imperfection can lead to significant loss in downforce which is the very thing that keeps the car glued to the ground during high-speed corners. Take that away and you're basically flying blind. Formula One cars are made out of carbon fiber. It's an advanced composite material that's incredibly strong and yet brittle when misused. In a crash, carbon fiber shatters instead of bending like metal. That's great in a controlled crash on a track. It absorbs energy and breaks apart to protect the driver. But hit a sharp edge pothole with your suspension arm? That same material could snap like a dry twig. It's not that F1 cars are weak. They're just not built for that kind of punishment. Their strength lies in precision, not brute durability. They're like racehorses, not donkeys. Ask one to gallop on a rocky trail, and you'll see it fall apart fast. Let's talk airflow. Aerodynamics is a massive part of what makes an F1 car go fast. The front wing, rear wing, floor, and even the tiny barge boards are meticulously sculpted to direct air in just the right way. That's why potholes are more than just a mechanical threat. They're also an aerodynamic nightmare. When a car hits a bump or hole, its carefully balanced airflow is disrupted. That might not sound like a big deal at first, until you realize that even a slight change in airflow can lead to massive instability at 300 plus kilometers per hour. Downforce, drag, tire temperatures. Everything gets thrown out of sync. Imagine being on a tightrope and someone suddenly yanks the rope mid-step. That's what hitting a pothole feels like to a Formula One car. Let's revisit suspension one more time, because this is where the difference between an F1 car and your Toyota becomes crystal clear. A normal car has tons of suspension travel. It's designed to soak up bumps, dips, curbs, you name it. F1 cars, not so much. 
Their suspension travel is measured in millimeters. That's intentional to keep the car stable and predictable at insane speeds. But what does that mean when a pothole shows up? It means the suspension has nowhere to go. The force of the impact travels directly into the chassis and things start to break. It's worth remembering that the environments these cars are driven in are incredibly different from regular roads. Formula One circuits are maintained to perfection. Every bump, every crack, every surface variation is analyzed and corrected. Some teams even bring laser scanning equipment to study how the surface changes between sessions. Now contrast that with real roads. Potholes, manhole covers, uneven patches, gravel, oil stains, broken paint and curbs. You get the idea. Even the best public roads wouldn't pass as practice quality in Formula One standards. That's why Formula One cars have such a narrow window for performance. They're optimized for the track and only the track. You might be wondering, what about the Monaco Grand Prix or the Singapore Grand Prix? Aren't those on city streets? Yes, they are. But here's the thing. Those city streets get rebuilt from the ground up for the race. They're resurfaced, leveled, and cleaned to racing standards. What looks like a normal street circuit to the casual fan is actually one of the most meticulously prepared race environments in the world. In other words, even when F1 cars go to the streets, those streets are turned into a racetrack. The second you drop an F1 car into an unprepared urban road with potholes, cracks, and elevation changes, it's no longer a race car. It's just a very expensive disaster waiting to happen. Formula One cars are mechanical masterpieces. They represent the bleeding edge of engineering, design, and human performance. But like all specialized machines, they're built with a purpose. And outside of that purpose, they simply don't function. The reason F1 cars can't survive potholes isn't because they're fragile. It's because they're focused. Every single part is made for speed, not survival. They don't need to survive potholes because in their world, Potholes don't exist, so the next time you see a pothole and curse your suspension, just be glad you're not in an F1 car. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.